Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In my last video I showed you how the Netgear R7800, the Netduma R1 and the Edge Router Lite from UBNT can prevent ping spikes that are caused by network congestion. In today's video I want to show you how to set up your network using the Edge Router Lite, which in my opinion at least is the best of the three routers I tested. Now step one is to plan our network. The first element is the device that connects our home to the internet. And how we attach our router to that will not be the same for all of you, because it depends on what kind of connection you have and what your internet service provider allows you to do. So you have to ask your provider for more information on how you can use your own router. So for my fiber connection I got a home gateway from my internet service provider which I cannot replace with another device. And it uses a fixed LAN IP address of 192.168.123.254, so I have to work with that. When you want to run your own router behind the ISP device, then the best idea is to change it from the router mode to the bridge mode, which I cannot do with mine because that's only available to business customers. So to use my own router behind the home gateway, I have to add the IP address of the Edge Router Lite as a DMZ host which means that the home gateway will then forward all ports to my Edge Router Lite and so it becomes fully exposed to the internet. Then on the ETH0 of the Edge Router Lite I must set the IP address to 192.168.1231, which is the address that I set as DMZ host inside of the home gateway. On ETH1 I then set the IP address to 192.168.1.1 and enable the DHCP server so that my TV, access points, PCs, etc. get an IP address from the Edge Router Lite. Besides handing out IP addresses to my network devices by using DHCP, I also want to be able to set static IP addresses, like let's say for the access points, so that I can access their web interface easier. Therefore I set the DHCP range from 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.1.200. So now that I know what I want to do, I can finally get to work. First, I have to go to the UBNT website and download the latest firmware for the ER Lite 3. Then I go to the web interface of my home gateway where I make sure that there are no port forwarding rules set. I do this because otherwise these ports will not get forwarded to my DMZ host. After that I go to the DMZ host selection and enter the IP address that I will later assign to the ETH0 of the Edge Router Lite. Now when I set up a new device then I like to reset it to the factory defaults first, even when I just got it fresh out of the box. I don't know why but it happened to me quite a few times that a new device would not quite work right until I did a factory reset, so that's part of my procedure now. Then I connect my PC to the ETH0 of the Edge Router Lite. And to access the web interface I must set a static IP address on the PC as there is no DHCP server running on the router yet. To do that I open the network and sharing center. Go to change adapter settings and into the properties of the ethernet connection. Then I go into the properties of the internet protocol version 4 and set a static IP address of 192.168.1.100. Now I go to the browser, type in 192.168.1.1, ignore that this connection isn't private and enter UBNT for both the user and the password. Now depending on how old the firmware is in your router, you might not get this basic setup wizard or even see the wizards tab. But even if you do it then, you should first go to system and check if the current firmware is older than the one that you downloaded from the UBNT website. If it is older, then go to update system image and install the firmware update that you downloaded. After that, go to the wizards tab and select basic setup. So this step might be different for you depending on what connection you have and what your internet service provider tells you to do in order to use this router behind the ISP device. I have to select static IP and then enter the IP that I have set as DMZ host inside of my ISP's home gateway. As gateway I must then enter the LAN IP address of the home gateway. And as DNS server I will just enter the Google DNS server, but you can use any you want. Then you have the option to bridge ETH1 and ETH2 so that they work like a two port LAN switch. But you should not do that because that will increase the CPU load on the router as it has to create a software switch. 
So I leave this disabled, set the IP address for the ETH1 LAN port to 192.168.1.1, enable the DHCP server and I don't touch the settings for the secondary LAN port as I'm not going to use it. Then you can also change the default UBNT user, create a new one or continue to use the existing one, but you should at least change the password of the UBNT user. Now, while the router is restarting, I connect my home gateway to ETH0 and my PC to ETH1. Then I go to the properties of my Ethernet connection and change the settings to use the DHCP server now. The PC should then get an IP address from the router, but when this does not work, then you can either just disable and re-enable the Ethernet connection to force it to get the new address, or you can open the command prompt and type in ipconfig release followed by ipconfig renew to get a new IP address from the router. Back inside the web interface I then go to services where we see that there is a DHCP server active on ETH1 and another one on ETH2 which uses a different IP address. So since I'm not going to use the ETH2 connection I will simply delete this DHCP server and then go into the details of the first one. Here I then change the IP range to start at 192.168.1.100 and end at 192.168.1.200 and I enter the IP addresses of the Google DNS servers. Then I do a speed test where it's very important that there is no other download or upload running as that would affect the results of this test. After that I go to the QoS tab, enter a policy name for the smart queue, select ETH0 as my WAN interface and enter the up and downstream bandwidth that we just determined with the speed test. And I also want to make sure that megabits per second is selected inside of the drop down menus. Now the router will prevent that up or downloads cause latency issues while I'm playing a game or use voice over IP. But if you watched my previous video then you already knew that. In case that you have problems with the too strict net or network address translation setting in some games, then you can go to the wizards tab, select UPnP or universal plug and play, which will then take care about opening the ports for you. So here you add a new interface, select ETH1 as internal interface and ETH0 as external interface. Then I connect ETH1 as well as all my other network devices to the switch and my LAN setup is done. Now, in the comments of the last video I was asked if you can still use an old router maybe as an access point and 4 port switch. Yes, you can do that, there are just two things that you need to take care of. Number one, assign a static LAN IP address that does not conflict with the DHCP range or any other devices that use a static IP. And number two, you must disable the DHCP server on the old router as there can only be one in your LAN. So to demonstrate the setup process I use an old Linksys router which I first reset to the factory defaults and then I connect just my PC to the router. To find out how you can connect to your old router after you reset it to the factory defaults you must check the documentation as this will not be the same for every device. Inside the web interface I then disable the DHCP server, set the LAN IP address to 192.168.1.2 and save the settings. Now I connect the ETH1 of the Edge Router Lite as well as all the other network devices. Then I just have to go to 192.168.1.2, finish the Wi-Fi setup and now my old router can live on as an access point and 4 port switch. So I hope that you enjoyed this setup guide for the Edge Router Lite and if you like this kind of content then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon, the link is in the description below. Also if you want to know what I'm currently working on then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then have a nice day and take care, my name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.